hello everyone welcome back to spectrum classes in this video i am going to show you the lab activity related to the determination of total hardness of a water sample so here in this titration we are going to determine the total hardness permanent hardness of a given water sample and we are also going to calculate the temporary hardness of a given water sample so for this experiment i am showing you the lab activity first and then we are doing the calculation part so let's go for the lab activity lab activity and in this experiment the apparatus required are conical flask beaker measuring cylinder hard water edta m by 100 ebt as an indicator dropper and unknown hard water so first i will take 100 ml of this unknown hard water here you can see 100 ml of unknown hard water i have taken i will transfer it in the beaker and now i kept it over the heating metal at 90 degrees centigrade so that the volume of this hard water reduced to 50 percent now i take 20 ml of this hard water to this i am just going to add ammonia solution up to 1 ml And now I will shake it well and then I am going to add EBT indicator to this hard water. So here you can see the color. Now I am going to titrate it against standardized EDTA solution. So about the standardization of EDTA. I have mentioned in my previous video so if you want to standardize your EDTA so you can go and check that video you will see the change in color near the end point so uh, near the end point you should be very cautious so here you see the color which is slightly changing and now it completely changed to blue from wine red to blue and now I am going to take the final reading now here you can see the water is heated and uh, the volume is reduced up to 50% I keep it there for room temp cool down to room temperature and it is supposed here that the temporary hardness is removed from this by boiling and here you can see the volume is almost reduced to 50 percent and now i make up the volume again up to 100 ml the help of deionized water so here you can see again i make up the volume up to 100 ml now i am going to transfer it into the beaker again and i'll take 20 ml of this in the conical flask and uh, here in this titration we are just going to determine the permanent hardness because temporary hardness is removed now i am going to add ammonia solution just to maintain the pH around 10 right because this EBT indicator works in the range of 9 to 10 you may have a question why it is required to maintain the pH because EDTA is acidic in nature so the pH of the solution is going to be down during the titration therefore it is necessary to add basic buffer which resists the change in the pH Now we are going to titrate it again and here now 
now you see the change in color and I stop the titration and now we are going to check the final reading so this is around 45 point something so I'll write in the tables So from the titration part we have this table in which for the total hardness of the sample the initial reading of the burette is 1 ml and the, and the final reading of the burette is 25.9. So the total volume consumed of EDTA is 24.9 against 20 ml of water sample. Similarly for permanent hardness means after boiling of the water sample and making it up 200 ml so in that case I have taken 20 ml of the boiled sample and I have titrated it against the EDTS solution so the initial reading of the burette is 23.6 and the final reading is 45.5 and the volume consumed is final minus initial and the volume consumed of EDTA is final reading minus initial reading so i get 45.5 minus 23.6 is equal to 21.9 concentration of the edta is 0 0.0106 molar right so now we are going to do the calculation part for the total hardness for which 24.9 volume of edta is consumed so here I am going to apply M1 V1 is equal to M2 V2 molarity equation right. So here on the left hand side I have put the hard water and on the right hand side I have kept EDTA solution readings right. So M1 I have to calculate into 20 ml of the water sample I have taken. Molarity of the EDTA is this much and volume of EDTA consumed is from here from the table 24.9 ml right. On calculation I will get m1 is equal to this much right now i'm going to calculate the strength so strength is molarity into molecular weight so molecular weight of what this is the molecular weight of calcium carbonate which is 100 right gram per mole and on multiplying these two i'll get 1.3197 grams per liter now i'm just going to convert this gram per liter into milligram per liter right so to convert this gram per liter into milligram per liter I have to multiply this with 1000 right so on multiplying this with 1000 I will get 1319.7 that is 1319.7 and this milligram per liter is also termed as ppm right so this is this much ppm of total hardness was present in the given water sample similarly we are going to calculate the permanent hardness so here I am just going to calculate the permanent hardness. So permanent hardness similarly I am just going to put this equation M1V1 is equal to M2V2. On the left hand side I will keep the values of hard water and on the right hand side I will keep the values of EDTA. Now I am putting the values so M1 into 20 ml of water sample I have taken in the conical flask. Molarity of the EDTA is 0 0.0106 molar and Total volume of EDTA consumed against this 20 ml is from the table 21.9 ml, right? So on solving it, I'll get M1 is equal to this much, right? So I have to convert it into gram per liter. So to convert that gram per liter, I'm just saying it to determine the strength of the water sample. So molarity into molecular. So molecular weight of calcium carbonate is taken over here because we are going to calculate the hardness of a given water sample at calcium carbonate scale and the molecular weight of calcium carbonate is 100 gram per mole so from mole to mole we will it will be cancelled out molarity is mole per liter right so mole can, will be cancelled out by this mole and i'll get gram per liter so on multiplying i'll get 1.1607 gram per liters now this gram per liter is we are going to convert into milligrams per liter so just to convert it into milligram per liter i'll have to multiply this by 1000 because in one gram we are having 1000 milligrams right so here we are getting this milligram per liter and this milligram per liter on multiplying this we are getting the value 
1160.7 or 1160.7 and this milligram per liter is converted into ppm because this is equal to the 1 ppm so in this manner we are getting the value of total hardness of the given water sample and the permanent hardness of the given water sample now we have to calculate the temporary hardness of the given water sample so how we are going to calculate the temporary hardness of the given water sample so this is equal to total hardness of the water sample minus permanent hardness of the water sample so in this manner we are going to get the value of temporary hardness so i have kept all the values of total and permanent hardness over there and on subtraction i'll get 159 ppm is the value for temporary hardness and all these values i have summarized in the table so here you can see the total hardness of a given water sample permanent hardness of a given water sample and temporary hardness of a given water sample so these are the results which we have to compile in our practical file right so i hope you find this video helpful if you like this video please like share and subscribe thank you all thanks for watching